In this video we will learn how to do a waffle structure in Para 3D and you can already see uh, that this waffle structure has intersections and that you can easily assemble it afterwards uh, after you produced it and, uh, with a laser cutter or with your CNC mold. We just start with a really simple 3D object. What you can see is uh, a simple box uh, transformed uh, with edit poly and uh, a mesh smooth modifier uh, added on top and I just uh, produce um, two uh, sectioning planes um, for my uh, section in Para 3D. One I do in my uh, top view and the other one I just uh, do in my uh, produce in my uh, front view and I just move them up that the sectionings are really happening with these kind of objects and the same with this one. Okay and uh, this I just call uh, sectioning sectioning front and the other other one I just call a sectioning top okay and then I just select my first one I go into para and I don't want to keep the original object uh, I just want to create an array, array of 10 which I do right now and uh, the next step in uh, my transform properties I just add my linear controller LEN like linear controller and uh, I just choose uh, the last item move this down to this point that it still intersects with my object and uh, I jo go into uh, update and I already produced my first section in planes and uh, then I choose my uh, second uh, section in planes I again go into power and I uh, don't want to keep the original objects and uh, here we go I just move this a little bit to the right and again I just go into transform choose my linear controller double click and uh, move this guy up that there's an intersection at uh, at the top I go into um, update and then you can already see that I have uh, a horizontal sectioning uh, plane array and a vertical sectioning plane array the next thing I have to do I have to take uh, the basic objects into power I go again into my basic objects and um, uh, open uh, power as assign controllers with my um, object and to clear this up a little bit I just move this uh, to uh, uh, to this point and I just label my first part here and just say these are my sectioning planes sectioning planes okay make this a little bit bigger and uh, what I want to do is I just want to produce sectionings now uh, with these uh, two sectioning planes and for this I go into a power uh, contour generator and I move this up and I just say I want to use my basic object and transform it with uh, these uh, sectioning planes from the front and for this I need something like a power link controller because I can't uh, connect um, a matrix with uh, with a power uh, a power node. So what I can do is, if I use my link controller, I can just connect it and I sh uh, again click on Show Properties All. I want to use uh, these kind of properties, and I update it. So this is already working. And um, if I go then into Transform and I change my count of my uh, sectioning planes to ten, then you can already see that it already produced my uh, sectioning planes uh, properly. I quickly do the same thing with my um, uh, top sectioning planes. I go again into power and just say contour generator, move it to the right and uh, I want to connect it to my power basic object and use my sectioning planes of my um, of my top uh, again. Uh, for this I need a, a power link controller. I connect it with my power exit and the power entrance of my top view. I have to collect uh, show all properties and uh, uh, update it and what I have to do again I just have to set the same count like my uh, uh, like the count of my uh, top planes. 
What I can also do, I can just uh, add uh, an array size. So I can uh, connect just my power node of my sectioning with uh, the power node of my sectioning top. And if I update this, uh, then you can see that it already changed uh, the number of my uh, sectioning planes to 10 and the same like to my top. And if I just go inside and just say, for example, I would like to have uh, 14, uh, 14 sectionings uh, through my object. And uh, then you can see that um, I just have to update it actually. Uh, then you can see that the count in my sectioning uh, contour sectioning is 14 and also the same in my uh, top view which is uh, really handy. Okay, uh, we clear up again a little bit. I just move these ones to, uh, to the top and uh, also these ones to the top. The difference between these two is that I used uh, this, uh, this array size so I can easily change the amount of sectioning planes just through one uh, one controller and I just go into my label and just uh, uh, call these uh, create uh, sectionings and uh, adjust the size a little bit so I just have a better overview also uh, when I open this file uh, a little bit later so I know what's going on. The next thing I want to do is I just want to add a shell modifier on my sectioning planes. Uh, I do a little bit of a detour which I think is quite handy. I just want to produce a reference of my sectioning planes. I go into uh, uh, this uh, power node um, parametric away. I actually produce uh, two as a reference and so I just choose the first one connected to my uh, sectioning planes of my um, uh, of my uh, front sectionings and I take the second one and I just connect it to um, uh, the contour sectionings of my uh, of my uh, uh, top view and uh, I just go into my first one again and can say uh, select the first member and what I have to do is I just add a shell modifier on top I just go into uh, shell modifier with uh, an amount of uh, one centimeter and uh, if I go and just say reload properties, uh, my spline information I don't need, then you can see that it already worked really well, that all my objects uh, already have a shell modifier on top. I do the same with this one. I just say select first member. It could be that there is no first member because uh, the intersection is still did still not happen with the object because it's probably already slightly lower, but this doesn't, um, this doesn't matter. I just go into my uh, shell, uh, shell modifier and um, I give this a different uh, size like 2 centimeters and I just refresh my uh, node spline information I actually don't need. So you can see that um, I have um, two sectioning planes, one with a, thic a thickness of uh, 2 centimeters, the other with a thickness of uh, uh, 1 centimeter. Okay, this was a lot of basic uh, preparations. If we choose our uh, uh, our, ba our basic object and just say uh, height selection, then we can already see our waffle structure. But this waffle structure doesn't work in the way we want to have this because we can't use it for CNC milling and laser cutting. Uh, producing the waffle structure uh, for laser cutting and CNC milling is now quite easy. We just go into para and choose uh, a compound and uh, I go into the imports of uh, power. I just connect my uh, object A, power node A, with my object power node B. And in my output type, I just choose mesh. And then we can already see here something like a waffle structure. And the recommendation that we choose type 3, this means uh, each item of A uh, with all items uh, of B. Uh, that's what it is and uh, we just go into uh, generate compound objects. It takes some seconds because it's already quite complex and we can just uh, select our power members and if I just go into isolate selection total uh, then we can already see that it works really really well. Okay we just have to do it now with our horizontal uh, sectionings. We go again into uh, compound and uh, I just choose uh, manage input power 
and uh, we do it the other way around. Uh, A is in this terms um, here my white power node and uh, B is my left power node. And again choose uh, output type mesh and my waffle structure and uh, I need to manage input type B. And uh, if I go into generate compound objects, again we have to wait for some seconds. I can just select them and we just see that it also worked properly with my horizontal sectioning planes. If I now want to produce this in my laser cutter or my CNC mill, I just have to pack them together. Uh, and with my uh, first waffle uh, sectionings, I go into transform and I just add something like my packing controller. This is my packing controller and in my uh, top view I just create uh, a plane which probably has the size of my uh, uh, laser, uh, laser cutter, doesn't matter, I just produce this plane right now. I go into rectangle packing and I uh, choose my packing area and if I update this I can already see that my objects now move to my new uh, area. So this is my um, first, pa uh, first part I want to uh, export uh, for CNC milling or laser cutting and I just do the same one uh, with the other side. I just go into transform I just add my packing controller I double click, I choose uh, rectangle packing and I just copy my packing area and my viewport and uh, I can just choose it now with my packing area uh, button, it's uh, this one and if I update uh, this again, uh, it also takes some seconds again, we just wait a little bit and here we go, I already have my um, my uh, uh, other objects for, uh, for my uh, laser cutting or for my CNC milling and you can just see that it didn't fit with my, uh, with my packing. I can probably choose a different uh, packing algorithm and just see if this works uh, better right now. Yeah, here we go, that's much better. It fits uh, perfectly on this packing area so this is the only thing we have to export. Okay, if we see everything together then the steps are actually quite simple. The first thing you have to do, you create your sectioning planes, then you also import your basic objects. You create uh, sectionings with your contour generator based on your uh, basic uh, 3D object. Uh, you add a shell modifier probably on a reference, which is not really necessary. You can also uh, uh, use immediately your um, contour sectioning planes. You create the waffle structure with your compound uh, node and then at the end of the day you go into your uh, packing controller and then you're already there and you have a really nice waffle structure which you can build uh, in uh, digital fabrication methods. Thanks for watching.